Hello traders, today's video we're gonna be talking about another website for move contracts. This website was just so cool and so packed with helpful data that I just couldn't help but to cover it. So let's dive in. Traders, to preface this video, I have recently released my trader course. That course contains strategy and indicators that teach you how to trade directionally based on position data, sentiment, order depth data, and market order volume. If you're interested in any of that, you can click the link in the description to learn a little bit more or to pick up the course. Now, what we're covering in today's video is backtesting and historical data of move contracts. Now, move contracts are basically just your ability uh, on, on FTX to go long or go short on an option straddle. So if you wanna know any more about move contracts, you can go to the FTX website and learn more about them there. FTX is a pretty terrible job at giving you historical data about move contracts. All that they tell you is where each move contract had expired. But what this website does, does, does is it gives you a ton of data. It even gives you liquidation data on move contracts as well. So what you're looking at here is the historical price movement of the October 1st contract. I can get this for a lot of different contracts, but what I can see here is where it opened, where it closed, and I can do this for you know, a bunch of uh, different daily move contracts. I can even go on the one minute time frame or the five minute time frame. Yep, oh, perfect. So here is the five minute time frame. Uh, yeah, five minute time frame. And I can go to any certain point and see how this contract has traded previously. But the coolest part of this website is I actually think in the analytics department. Uh, we have trade data, implied volatility, historical and expiration data. I'm gonna show you guys something that I find quite cool. It is normalization. And let me show you guys what this means. So if the move contract price at uh, the listing of its strike price is, let's say it's 200 and expiration is 100, the normalized expiration is gonna be 0.5. And what that is, is here per day of the week. Now what we can see is, what I do with this is, let's say our goal is to find what is the absolute best time on a Tuesday to buy a move contract historically. Right, So what we would want to get is we would get, want to get a normalization that is as high as possible. So a normalization below one means that if we were to buy this move contract on every Tuesday, when the contract got its strike price, we would lose money, right? Because 0.896 of that original price. But if we had done that on Wednesday, we'd be making a fair amount of money. How about a two? Two hours after the move contract gets a strike price, still on Tuesday, it's probably, it's not great. Seven, a little bit better here. We want this to be as high as possible when we buy, okay? That's just a little thing of how this works. So you can play with different times to see when it typically is most profitable to buy these move contracts. It looks like buying it at 15 UTC, each day 17 UTC. And then you can see just how terrible of an idea it typically is to buy a move contract a few hours before expiration. Because what this is telling you guys is what this says here is that three hours before expiration, the probability and the historical odds that you are going to make more money than you lose is very, very, very low, right? Now, one hour before, <laughs> you make no money every day, right? It's too late to buy the contract. 22, you're, you're not getting any money on any day. Remember, when we buy move contracts, we want this number to be as high as possible. When we short, we want this normalization number to be as low as possible. To reiterate what I mean by that, 22 o'clock, which is two hours before expiration, if you were to short this every single, let's say, Saturday, well, that means that if you short this, uh, historically what this is telling you is if you short this at 100 at 22 o'clock UTC, on average, it expires to a price of 78.4 USD, okay? But if you were to short this, like let's say at 19 o'clock, you would make even more money here. But let, again, let's go back to going long. So if we go to, let's say four hours after move contracts get a strike price, you can see that the best possible Thing that you can do is on a Wednesday, buying has amazing expected value. So that's something that I like to do with expiration normalized. Um, it might be a little bit complex, and I hope it's not like uh, too complex for you guys, and I hope that that makes sense, but it's just comparing any specific time on average to expiration, when's the best time to buy and when's the best time to sell. So typically the best times to sell is weirdly, you know, near the beginning of the contract, which probably, uh, actually, not a great, hmm. When the contract opens, some of these are actually not a bad buy at opening. 
But typically the best time to sell is near the beginning and near the end. The best time to buy is typically like at very strange times, like five UTC is just phenomenal. Your value on Wednesday and Thursday is great if you buy at five UTC. Um, so yeah. Another thing is implied volatility. Uh, so we can actually see the implied volatility of each daily contract at its uh, open. Look at just how low volatility is trading now, really low. So that's probably better to buy volatility than to short it, right? And now my favorite part of the whole of the whole thing, the what this video was really leading up to, this is the coolest. This shows you the liquidations, the buys, the sells on different daily move contracts. So to show you guys that, here are all the liquidation buys and sells on the October 12th expiring move contract that expired uh, yesterday. Okay, so what we see here is we have a, we had a liquidation of 0.87 move uh, contract for uh, liquidated short. Look at all of these liquidated shorts. My gosh, just a ton of liquidated shorts when price rose. There's even some liquidated longs here, strangely enough. And let's go look uh, even more interestingly, let's go look at the, the patterns of buys and sells. It really looks like the buys here dominated. Let's go into one hour just to really ISO. If it lets me go into one hour zoom, I think it's, uh, I don't know if, hmm, it's a little bit buggy right now, but that's okay. Is it still trying to go in the one hour zoom? Yeah, but you guys get the idea. We can see that typically there's a lot more sells on these move contracts than there are buys. That makes sense. Typically on most move contract and most daily move contracts, as strange as this sounds, it's typically a better idea to short volatility than to long volatility on the daily. Now, that is not financial advice by any means. I'm talking about over a longer period of time. It's just typically better. Um, but black swans and crazy volatility events will kill you if you do that. So it's harder, but stop losses can help with that so you don't get liquidated. But typically you can see that near the beginning of this contract, uh, most people typically are selling, although there are some buys scattered here, but when not much is happening, it looks like most people are mostly selling. But let's go look at another random one. Let's look at the October 1st. I'm gonna click the all for the October 1st. And yeah, you can see just how many people were selling. This is just basically dominated by the, the uh, move contract sellers. I can also isolate the liquidations. Looks like we had a decently big liquidation at 310 of two move contracts, a liquidated uh, contract down here. Typically, I think that it isn't a terrible strategy to long move contracts when you see liquidated uh, longs, red, and to short move contracts when you see liquidated shorts, green. And you can see if you had done that, that would have actually been quite profitable. You can see we have a large amount of buying here. We have a large amount of selling at the contract open and that makes sense. But overall, I think that this website is just super cool. I was so excited when I uh, first stumbled upon the website, when I found it on Twitter. And I have to give all credit to these two guys here. They've done a great job um, with creating this. And I really like looking at the best hours to buy on certain weekdays. I think that that's quite cool. And I can even show you guys a little bit of normalization here. So let's say at uh, 5 UTC, um, what's typically happened? You know, oh, and here we go. At 5 UTC, we can see that if you had bought a move contract at 5 UTC, to make this simpler, if you bought a move contract at 5 UTC on uh, March 12th, you would have made eight times your investment, okay? That, that is a fact right there. If you had bought at 5 UTC on here, for some reason, you would have, been, you would have made 8X. At, if you held it till expiration. Now, if you had bought uh, with a lot of these, you would have lost a lot of money. Like if you had bought at uh, five UTC, which is five hours after the contract gets a strike price and just held it till expiration, you would have lost 84% because this expires at a 0.16. So if you had bought it at 100, it would have expired at 16. Not good value. But here you can see if you bought it at five UTC, you would have made uh, three times your investment. But then we can like play with this too. Like, hey, let's go look at the craziness of buying it three hours before the move contract expires. It's typically a pretty ter terrible idea. It's a horrible idea to do this. But there are some random things that happen. Like um, on February 19th, had you bought three hours before the move contract had expired, you would have made seven times your investment, you know? But here it's typically just a, a terrible idea. You know, you get some random like, oh, you would have made 2.6X. But then here you get like, oh my gosh, if you had bought three hours before 
uh, on September 18th, it looks here like you would have you would have lost 96%. Uh, oh. So it would have expired to 0 0.04. So that's what uh, that's how these uh, these these work. Okay. So actually, I'm I'm kind of curious of what happened at uh, here because I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. That was what September. Oh, it was September 16th. So let's go September 18th or was it September 16th? September 18th. So I'm like, hey, so September 18th, it looks like this contract expired super, super cheap. So let's go take a look at it. And that's what we can do here. Oh yeah, this expired really cheap. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. Closes at $4. So September 18th, I think this expired at like four or five bucks. So if you had bought at 21 o'clock with, with that, uh, you would have lost. Yeah, that makes sense. That was correct. So it looks like that is correct. And I love playing with normalization. So like, hey, let's go simulate how good would it have been to buy uh, six hours after the move contract as a strike price. Uh, it's okay. It's typically fine. Normally, yeah, it's fine. You can make like, you know, 1.79 your investment here. You would have made uh, 4.65. And with that same normalization, let's go break it down by day of the week, like I showed you before. Yep, here. Looks like it would have been pretty good to do on a Wednesday and Thursday. So if you've learned anything from this video, it's typically better to buy volatility on Wednesday. Buy volatility on Thursday, short volatility on the weekend, on Saturday. So that's gonna do it for this video. I think that this cool is really cool. All credit goes to uh, Crypto Alpha and Celto. They've done a great job at uh, creating this website. There's a lot of alpha to be gained by uh, perusing different versions of this. I found many patterns of taking advantage of liquidations on move contracts, that's pretty cool. I've also found patterns of, I mean, the majority of my strategy now is looking at this normalization to find what is the best time to time volatility, what is the best time to short for timing volatility, and there's some pretty cool patterns that you can recognize. So if you're obsessed with pattern recognition and really wanna see a cool site, go to moveproject.io.